Welcome to today's video about Sjogren's versus Rheumatoid Arthritis versus MS, the ultimate symptom guide. Have you ever walked into your doctor's office with a list of symptoms, chronic fatigue, joint pain, tingling in your hands, and walked out feeling like you still don't have real answers? Here are the truth. Three of the most commonly misdiagnosed autoimmune conditions, Sjogren's syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, and multiple sclerosis, share so many overlapping symptoms that even experienced doctors sometimes struggle to tell them apart in the early stages. And if you're living with unexplained fatigue, pain that moves around your body, or strange sensations you can't quite describe, this video might finally give you the clarity you've been searching for. I'm Ethan, and I've spent years breaking down complex health conditions into language that actually makes sense. Today we're going to walk through the key differences between these three conditions and more importantly, help you understand what your body might be trying to tell you. Before we dive in, let me tell you why this matters so much. According to research published by the American College of Rheumatology, the average person with an autoimmune condition sees six different doctors over nearly four years before getting an accurate diagnosis. Four years of your life, wondering what's wrong trying treatments that don't work, feeling dismissed. And here's what makes it even more complicated. Your body doesn't read medical textbooks. It doesn't present symptoms in neat, organized categories. Real people often experience a mix of symptoms that could point to multiple conditions. So whether you're someone who's been dealing with unexplained symptoms or you're trying to understand what a loved one is going through, this guide is for you. I'm going to use simple comparisons, real examples, and the latest research to help you see the differences clearly. Now, before we get into the specific symptoms, I need to tell you about the one warning sign that shows up in all three conditions, but manifests differently in each one. It's so subtle that most people ignore it for months or even years. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first, let's understand what's actually happening inside your body with each of these conditions. Think of your immune system like a highly trained security team for your body. In healthy people, this team protects you from real threats, bacteria, viruses, harmful invaders. But in autoimmune diseases, something goes wrong. Your security team gets confused and starts attacking your own body's tissues. The difference between Sjogren's, rheumatoid arthritis, and MS is which part of your body they target. Sjogren's syndrome, your immune system primarily attacks your moisture-producing glands. Imagine your body's natural lubrication system slowly being shut down. According to the Sjogren's Foundation, this affects about 4 million Americans, and 90% are women. But here's the catch. It often takes more than three years to diagnose because the early symptoms seem so ordinary. Rheumatoid arthritis, this is where your immune system targets the lining of your joints. Picture the smooth, cushioned surface inside your joints gradually becoming inflamed and damaged. The Arthritis Foundation reports that 1.3 million Americans live with RA, and it typically strikes between ages 30 and 60. Unlike regular wear and tear arthritis, this is your body actively attacking itself. Multiple sclerosis, in MS, your immune system attacks the protective covering around your nerve fibers, kind of like stripping the insulation off electrical wires. The National Multiple Sclerosis Society estimates nearly one million Americans have MS, and it's two to three times more common in women than men. So, same problem, confused immune system, but three very different targets. And that's why the symptoms can look so different, even though they sometimes overlap. Let's talk about what you actually feel with each condition, because this is where it gets personal, where your daily experience tells the story. Dryness versus pain versus nerve symptoms. If you have Sjogren's, the hallmark symptom is dryness, but not just, I need some water dryness. We're talking about eyes that feel like sandpaper, a mouth so dry you struggle to swallow food, dental cavities that suddenly appear even though you brush regularly, 
One patient I learned about from Johns Hopkins research described it like this. It feels like I swallowed a cotton ball that got stuck in my throat. Your eyes might be red and irritated. You might wake up with your tongue stuck to the roof of your mouth. Some people develop painful sores in their mouth or chronic yeast infections because the protective moisture barriers are compromised. With rheumatoid arthritis, pain and stiffness are your main signals. But here's the key difference from regular joint pain. It's symmetrical. If your right wrist hurts, your left wrist probably hurts too. And it's worst in the morning. Many people with RA describe needing 30 minutes to an hour just to loosen up after waking up. According to research from the Mayo Clinic, the small joints are usually hit first. Fingers, wrists, the base of your toes. Your joints might feel warm to the touch, look swollen, or feel tender when pressed. Some people notice their hands look puffy or their wedding ring suddenly doesn't fit. Multiple sclerosis shows up with neurological symptoms that can seem bizarre if you don't know what's causing them. Numbness or tingling in your arms or legs that comes and goes. Electric shock sensations when you move your neck. Doctors call this Lermit sign. Vision problems in one eye, like blurriness or pain when you look around. According to Cleveland Clinic research, about 55% of MS patients experience vision issues as their first symptom. You might feel clumsy or off balance. Some people describe it like walking on a rocking boat. Or you might have trouble with bladder control. Even though nothing is mechanically wrong with your bladder, the nerve signals just aren't communicating properly. Remember that subtle warning sign I mentioned earlier? Here it is, fatigue. All three conditions cause profound, life-altering fatigue, but the pattern is different. With Sjogren's fatigue is often constant and crushing, sometimes called brain fog fatigue. You feel mentally exhausted along with physically drained. Rheumatoid arthritis fatigue tends to come in waves, often matching up with flares of joint pain and inflammation. Research published in Rheumatology International shows that RA fatigue affects up to 80% of patients. MS fatigue is uniquely worsened by heat. If you have MS and take a hot shower or spend time in the sun, your fatigue might dramatically worsen. This is called Uthoff's phenomenon, and it's a major clue for doctors. This is why your experience matters. The quality and pattern of your symptoms often tell the story more than the symptoms themselves. Here's another critical difference, how these conditions unfold over time. Sjogren's typically develop slowly and insidiously. You might not even realize something's wrong for months. You think you're just getting older, your eyes are tired from screens, you're stressed. But gradually, the dryness becomes undeniable. Rheumatoid arthritis can start suddenly or gradually, but once it's active, you'll know. The pain and swelling are hard to ignore. Without treatment, joint damage can progress within the first two years, according to research from the Hospital for Special Surgery. Multiple sclerosis often follows a relapsing remitting pattern, especially early on. You might have an episode of symptoms, an attack that lasts days or weeks, then it improves or even disappears completely. These unpredictable attacks are a hallmark of MS, reported in about 85% of cases, according to the National MS Society. Now, here's where it gets tricky and why you need to work with a knowledgeable doctor. About 30% of people with Sjogren's also develop rheumatoid arthritis. Some Sjogren's patients experience nerve problems that mimic MS. And occasionally, people have more than one autoimmune condition at the same time. This isn't meant to scare you. It's meant to empower you. If you're experiencing symptoms that don't fit neatly into one category, you're not crazy. You're not imagining things. Your body is complex, and these conditions are complex. How do doctors actually tell these apart? For Sjogren's, they look for a specific antibodies in your blood called SSA and SSB, and they might do a simple test called the Schirmer test, where they put a small strip of paper in your lower eyelid to measure tear production. Sometimes they'll do a lip biopsy to look at your salivary glands under a microscope. For rheumatoid arthritis, doctors check for rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP antibodies in your blood, plus markers of inflammation like CRP and ESR. 
X-rays or ultrasounds can show joint damage or inflammation. For multiple sclerosis, the gold standard is an MRI of your brain and spinal cord, looking for characteristic lesions, those damaged areas where the nerve insulation has been attacked. They might also do a spinal tap to look for specific proteins in your cerebrospinal fluid. According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, early and accurate diagnosis makes a tremendous difference in all three conditions. The treatments are different, and starting the right treatment early can prevent permanent damage. Here's what people who successfully manage these conditions do differently. They advocate for themselves. They keep detailed symptom journals, not just my joints hurt, but pain in left wrist and both knees, worse in morning, stiffness lasted 45 minutes, improved after movement. They find specialists who listen, a rheumatologist for Sjogren's and RA, a neurologist for MS. The people who get answers don't give up after one dismissive doctor. They connect the dots. They notice patterns. Does heat make symptoms worse? Do symptoms improve or worsen at certain times? Is there symmetry to the pain? They understand that protecting their body from further damage is just as important as treating current symptoms. They work with their medical team to create a comprehensive plan, not just chase symptom relief. If you're watching this and thinking, I have some of these symptoms, what do I do? First, don't panic. Having fatigue and joint pain doesn't automatically mean you have an autoimmune disease, but it does mean you deserve to have your concerns taken seriously. Start by seeing your primary care doctor and describing your symptoms clearly. Bring your symptom journal. If they order basic blood work and everything looks normal, but you're still struggling, ask for a referral to a specialist. You're not trying to diagnose yourself. You're trying to support your body while getting professional answers. Stay hydrated, prioritize sleep, reduce inflammatory foods if possible, manage stress where you can. These aren't cures, but they support your body's natural healing processes while you search for answers. Look, I know how frustrating it is to feel dismissed or told it's just stress when you know something real is happening in your body. The difference between Sjogren's syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, and multiple sclerosis might seem subtle from the outside, but when you're living with unexplained symptoms, these differences are everything. They're the difference between years of confusion and finally getting the right diagnosis between ineffective treatments and ones that actually work. If this video helped you understand your symptoms better, or if you think it could help someone you care about who's struggling to get answers, do me a favor, hit that like button and share this video. Type yes in the comments if you found this helpful. It helps YouTube show this information to more people who need it. And remember, your body is trying to communicate with you. You're not imagining your symptoms. Keep searching for answers. You deserve a doctor who listens, a diagnosis that makes sense, and treatment that actually improves your quality of life. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.